Hey everybody and welcome to episode 2 of Inside the Bunker. I'm your host Keith Bunker. I went and saw Shang-Chi over the weekend, as you can see from my shirt for those on YouTube. We really fell in love with it. Uh, it was great, whether you like Marvel movies or not, if you like anything inspired by that type of cinema, you know, Jet Li movies, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, that type of feel, it was fantastic. Probably some of the best action scenes I've seen in a Marvel movie, and it was fantastic. So with that, I wanted to make this week's episode comic book related. So I decided to invite a good friend of mine, Rick Shea, he's the owner and operator of Famous Faces and Funnies in West Melbourne, to come on and do an interview, talk about the comics industry and where it was going, you know, how different media has affected the comic book industry, good and bad. And it was a great time, great interview. So without further ado, here's my interview with Rick Shea joining me inside the bunker. All right. So I wanted to start off today uh, welcoming a good friend of mine, Rick Shea, the owner of, and operator of Famous Faces and Funnies in West Melbourne to Inside the Bunker. Hey, Rick, how's it going? Good. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, I really wanted to get into it's As everybody knows, Shang-Chi launched it this week. So I kind of was wanting to do like a comic book episode, you know, to kind of fill in, you know, the gaps of, you know, where you got started into the comic industry and, and your shop and everything in general. Uh, so my question to you, starting off, what was really got you into the comic industry as a whole, including, you know, owning your own comic store and business? Um, I've just been a comic book fan my whole life. Started reading comics first way back in 1986. Uh, started with GI Joe yearbook two and just, uh, a few years later, I was um, helping out at a store, just started helping over at Space Coast Comics when I was like 13. Um, probably not the safest drive there, riding my bicycle down US-1 uh, from Valkyria, but um, basically just, you know, uh, loved what I was doing and, um, you know, and went from there to working at another store and then Famous Faces and eventually bought uh, bought the shop from uh, the former owner who I worked for for several years. But um, yeah, I've just always been a comic fan and it's a, a dream come true to kind of work in this industry and talk to people what we're passionate about, you know, what we enjoy. We offer money back guarantee on any book that we recommend and we really just, you know, believe in what we're doing. You know, there's no um, corporate, you know, rule from up high, oh, push this or sell this more. It's like we, there's been books we've ordered a hundred of and then read it and we're like, oh, it's not that good. So we're not going to force people to buy it. You know, we just bite the bullet because we're only as good as our recommendations and you know we're not going to trick someone into buying something we don't really enjoy so everyone's but that only rarely happens normally you're able to read stuff in advance or at least go hey this writer's always going to deliver and uh you know so we we just are lucky to do what we're passionate about i'm lucky to have such an incredible staff that's kind of guided us to our most successful year yet yeah that's something too i noticed on most comic stores i mean i've for the most part in the last 24 to 25 years been shopping only at famous faces but they don't offer money back guarantees on comic books. Cause I mean, what's stopping someone from reading, but I mean, you've built that loyal, you know, uh, customer base and, and just a really great community. Uh, what would you tell me about? I mean, I know the community is a big part of why I shop at your store, why I've been shopping. I mean, the knowledge of your staff in general, just, and I mean, what, what, is your feelings about the community? We're we're very lucky and very thankful to have such a great, um, lo especially local community. Um, last few years, we've been doing live sales as well, which has broadened our audience to you know people from Georgia and New York and California and just all over the country, and even a few you know customers in Australia and Holland and just all over the place. Uh, for the most part, um, we're we're so thankful to have a community that supports our store and got behind the message of what we're doing and what we're into, and uh, you know couldn't be more thankful for that. We have a bunch of great partnerships with. Um, Cinema World and Broken Barrel and just a lot of other places and other, you know, locally owned businesses for the most part that uh, really kind of, you know, believe in what we're doing. And, and we've been, you know, partners with schools and partners with libraries and stuff like that. And just we'll pretty much partner up with anyone we can to kind of promote reading, get kids into comics and uh, just, you know, get more people excited about what we're we're already enjoying. And that's, you know, that's one of our favorite parts of the job. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, you can definitely tell. I mean, the passion from everybody there is is just fantastic. What personally, um, on a personal level, what's your favorite all time writers, artists in the comic industry that you grew up like got really got you into? Like, man, I really want to do this for a living. 
Um, I mean, uh, it, you know, it, of course, it's changed over the years, you know, or taste as they've, you know, as, as new things have come out. But yeah, some of my favorite creators, uh, it's mostly like bigger writers I follow. Brian came on, was lucky to kind of get in a, a you know, re- a friendship and a relationship with him when he first, you know, started with uh, even before Why the Last Man, which I'm so excited to see in just a few days. You know, oh, my God, I've been waiting literally 19 years for this show. to Same, get- same. I'm so, excited. <laughs> yeah. My favorite comic of all time. Uh, but yeah, Brian K. Vaughn, um, phenomenal, phenomenal stuff. Uh, just everything he writes is so good. Um, and luckily, we've started to see some of his stuff be adapted for TV. And Why the Last Man, I think, is going to be the next, you know, the next Walking Dead, the next Game of Thrones. I think it's going to be the water cooler show of the next year. And people are just going to jump on board. And I think season two will get even better and so on. Um, but yeah, Brian K. Vaughn, Jeff Johns, Brad Meltzer. Um, you know, Donny Cates has just been the biggest uh, writer the last few years. James Tinian. There's just so many talented creators out there. Um, some, so many incredible artists to follow. I mean, we're, we're really in a golden age of um, geeky entertainment. And it's amazing that, you know, with not just the MCU, but, you know, you get to see so many great movies, TV shows and shows on Netflix and stuff that are popping up that are based on comic books. And as more people go, oh, man, I want to know more about Invincible. Oh, what? where do I need to jump in at the boys? You know, like there's so many good um, things that are coming from comics. We're just in a, a you know, a we we've been a part of geek culture for you know decades now but it's you know pop culture is geek cult is you know geek culture at this point and whether it's marvel or star wars or whatever or just the you know the craziest independent book is getting optioned you know within five issues or sometimes before it even ships to become the next movie the next netflix series whatever and we're really seeing that pay off um as far as um, you know, people coming in going, oh man, Invincible, I have to know what happens next. Oh my God, that, that really got me hooked. You know, where do I jump in? And uh, thank, thanks to Image, thanks to Robert Kirkman for keeping that stuff available and printing so many copies that, you know, millions of new fans jumped aboard and they mostly, you know, really did come over and check out the comic. So we're super thankful to have that. So yeah, Robert Kirkman, of course, is another um, of my favorite writers. I mean, Walking Dead, Invincible, all his other stuff is great too, but those two things are literally cultural phenomenons, you know, that are just really caught on. And so, you know, we're, we're, you know, we're just so lucky to have so many great creators that just keep bringing us fresh new stuff and keeping things exciting and interesting. Yeah. Would you say too, I know you, you kind of touched on it, the, uh, the rise of comic books in the last, especially like 15 years with Walking Dead, a big television series, you know, you have the MCU, the DCEU, you know, you have, has it like brought in a new like generation of comic fans to your store? Um, it definitely has. I mean, the funny thing used to be um, back in the the day, you know, we didn't see quite the response, but it's like at this point, the minute something gets optioned, there's people that are ahead of the curve. We've sold a bunch of Why the Last Man um, the last few months as they've teased it and kind of built up to it. Um, and now that they're, uh, you know, right right around the corner, you know, I expect in the next two or three weeks, you better believe we ordered dozens more copies of Y volume one through five, you know, just to have them all available. And as people were like, oh man, is the comic any good? It's like, it's my favorite comic I've ever read in, you know, 35 years of reading comics. So uh, yeah, it's, it's phenomenal. And it's just, I think that's going to be just a incredible series that gets everyone talking more than anything. So we're, we're so lucky to see people not just go, oh, I only want to watch the movies. I only want to watch, you know, um, uh, this cartoon or this this series, and they're they're going. Oh man, I can't wait till next season. I have to know where to pick up. Where did boys leave off after season two? Okay, well you want to jump into this volume, and here's where you you go. And some people will start at the beginning to see the differences because of course there's changes like anything else. But more often than not, there there were changes that have worked and uh, you know have kept true to uh, the heart of the story and what the creators are going for. And it really you know really shows how much love and care goes into these things. You know, that's awesome. Yeah, and I like I said, I mean it's been back in the day, I mean, you were made fun of for a few red comic books, you know, but right. same with video games or any kind of like geek culture. And it's, right. it's funny now how it's, it's the cool thing, you know, to go see the new comic book movie or go to the shop or whatever, collect pops, you know, whatever yeah. it may be yeah. with the rise of digital and streaming. I know it, it's affected the video game industry pretty hard. Um, movies, obviously, I mean, with the whole thing with Scarlett Johansson and, you know, the whole, you know, rift between Disney plus and, and all of that, has that really affected you in any way? And what was, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I mean, here's the thing, like Marvel and DC are obviously pushing for a bigger digital audience. And there is some great resources as far as Marvel or DC. If you pay a small fee, I think, you know, DCs for the whole year is like $75. Mm-hmm. You can read pretty much every DC comic that's ever come out from the thirties all the way up to, you know, three or six months ago or whatever. And there's some stuff that's digital first. It won't even be printed for th- 
three months, months, whatever. Um, but at the same time, it really hasn't hurt our business. Like we, we seem to be doing record numbers uh, every month, uh, you know, so um, we're selling lots of new comics, lots of new graphic novels, lots of back issues, lots of pops, toys, merchandise. I mean, it's just we're constantly seeing a new stream of people. And I don't think digital's necessarily um, help us as much as, you know, every once in a while we see an example that goes, well, I read this digitally and then I wanted it so bad to lend out to friends that I, you know, went and bought it. Every once in a while that happens, but not as much as we'd like. But at the same time, I don't think I haven't had any customers go, OK, I quit comics forever. I'm going to only read them digitally. Um, but at the same time, I think last year, you know, when everyone was, um, you know, kind of not sure what was going on with, uh, with COVID, um, more people were coming out going, Hey, I've got, you know, Hey, I'm not going to the movies. I'm not going to concerts. I'm not going to, you know, out to the bar drinking every night. So they started spending more money on comics and other things like that. And it's, we, we've seen a whole crop of new customers that really, some of them just got in for the, you know, into comics for the first time. So it's just really, really wild. Uh, you know how it's gone and we're just lucky to um, see a whole new audience and a whole new audience has found us as we found new ways to kind of sell and reach out to people through live sales. So um, yeah, that's, that's been a big part of why our, our store, you know, um, is thriving, but it seems like more comic stores than not are telling me, oh yeah, we had a better year, you know, we're doing better than ever. So I'm glad to see that across, you know, uh, all, all, almost all the different stores I've talked to. Yeah. And, you, and yeah, I know you started the live auctions. Was it 2018? I believe. Uh, we, yeah, we, it was actually uh, four, yeah, almost four years ago. I think it was April. I want to say 2017. I think we've been okay. doing it almost four years. Uh, so yeah, so may, it might've been 2018. Yeah. I think it's three and a half, four years now at this point. So it's, yeah, it's possible. Yeah. And I've noticed too, uh, as you were saying, I mean, with COVID and everything, I mean, I know that was a big part of your business then. Cause I know you guys did shut down, you know, obviously as everybody did, but um, that was a big part of your business and watching the live auctions. So tell me a little bit about those live auctions and how people can reach your store and be able to watch them. Um, yeah, we do live sales uh, five days a week. It's all set prices like, a you know, eBay buy it now. Um, every once in a while, someone's like, oh, well, you do, you know, 70 for this $80 thing. We're like, okay, you know, rarity. But um, for the most part, uh, we, we mostly price stuff pretty fairly. Same thing, we buy collections if you're local and you're looking to sell your toys, your pops, your comics, whatever. Um, we're, we're always paying as fair as possible. You know, for the most part, 95, 98% of the time it works out where, someone brings a collection and we're like, Hey, we'll give you you know, 500 bucks for this. And you know, there was a, there was a family that was almost in tears because we gave them a thousand dollars. They were like, Oh, we were hoping to get like two or 300. I was like, no, that's, you know, there's some good stuff in the air for a thousand dollars to us. And they, they were so thankful because it went to help, you know, someone in need. Um, and we, you know, that's just what it's all about. It's just really kind of um, making sure that we're getting, uh, you know, treating people fairly so that they come back. So um, yeah, the, the live sales though have been an absolute giant um, part of our growth uh, well, we did close for a lot of last year where we weren't open for in indoor shopping, um, live sales, we, we went from going out two or three times a week to up to five and even six, uh, and a few times seven or eight, cause we were absolutely crazy. Uh, but yeah, but we, I've just got an incredible staff that's really, really, you know, given, uh, so much time and energy into that. And it's worked out real well. And just a customer base that's really appreciated what we've done. And, you know, we're, we're so thankful to hear we're on the right track. You know, we just want to make sure people are happy with their purchase. Every once in a while, something happens, something gets damaged during shipping or we screwed up and didn't, you know, pull the right thing. Every once in a great while, whenever that happens, we of course make it right, either replace it or refund it or whatever. Um, but for the most part, um, we have customers that place a weekly regular comic order from us every week. And some, sometimes people are like, Oh, I'm going to wait. Can I pile up a month's worth of stuff and send it all at once? No problem. You know, but yeah, you can find us on our Facebook page, um, with weekly live sales, um, every Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, Saturday and Monday. Um, and we've just had a great time doing them. It's a really a lot of fun. Like, um, we focus on, sometimes on silver and bronze age. Sometimes we focus on just, uh, half off graphic novels. Sometimes we focus on just pops or, uh, every Saturday we do just toys, gen pops, uh, statues, and merchandise in general, and it's worked really, really well. We've got a great pattern, and there's some people that watch every Saturday. There's some people that watch every Monday night. Um, and there's some people that literally almost never miss a live sale. We've had customers that have watched live sales from uh, a wedding, uh, which I'm like, wow. dude, that seems extreme. <laughs> I was like, he's like, oh, it's it's my mom's third marriage. Don't worry about it. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> Just skip this one. Um, and then we've had someone else that I almost don't want to say this out loud because it sounds terrible. 
someone watched part of our live sale from a funeral. And I was like, no, I was like, that's too far. I was like, we appreciate that you're a loyal, loyal viewer, but uh, that seems excessive. We were like, oh my God, that's, that's crazy. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of that's loyalty so though. I mean, <laughs> have that passion that they don't want to miss what we've got because they're like, oh, I can't miss when you guys do bonds and silver. I know you're going to have some good stuff at fair prices. So, but that seems excessive. Yeah. Weddings and funerals, you should maybe take the day off from watching our live sales, but we <laughs> the continued support of all the people that tune in all the time and you know very just thankful to have uh such a loyal customer base that you know we're, we're is growing all the time so it's it's always fun we always have a great time with it we we kind of joke around you know there's definitely some times where we're like oh man that's that's that joke's a little too far i hope you know hope parents are you know are don't have little kids watching but for the most part we haven't really had any problems you know we we definitely try and keep it uh you know fairly calm but every once in a while our, our you know in, in jokes go a little uh, a little farther than they probably should but right. now we have we have a great time with it but yeah it's it's definitely been fun doing live sales uh several times a week. We've even done a few special things like last year, what would have been free comic day um, for 2020 first week of May. Um, Paul had the brilliant idea of doing a 26 hour live auction, uh, wow. which was one hour per letter of the alphabet. And there were some letters like S where we could have gone for three or four hours with Spider-Man, Superman, Spawn and all that stuff. Um, and then there were some letters that were a little rougher, like O and P and Q and Z uh, were a little slower, but uh, ultimately we had a great time doing it. And um, we did 26 hours straight through in a row. Didn't, didn't, sleep didn't nap whatever just ran through it and we had a great time we did you know a great amount of business and our customers a bunch of new people found us just with all the publicity we got there through bleeding cool and like gail simone and a bunch of other you know people out there popped in and kind of um you know put it on their facebook or twitter so it was, it's cool to be like oh we're watching live still oh there's gail simone okay cool one of the best writers in the industry just pops in and buys some godzilla toys from us you know oh, wow and, uh, so it's always fun. And some people are like, oh, my God, I'm such a big fan of you. Oh, my, you know, I can't believe you're you're hanging out with us. Like, it's always always a great time. But, yeah, live sales have been a lot of fun and a big part of our uh, growth. And I'd recommend any other store that's not doing them. You know, they're, they they seem like a lot of work and they are. But uh, but they definitely have paid off well for us. And we've had a great time with them. Yeah, I do. I, I try to go in as when I can, you know, obviously working full time, it's hard, but I do. Try, and I don't turn it, tune into them at work, you know, just for the record, right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, or funerals or anything else. But There you go. That's good. Um, so one thing too, I don't know um, if you caught any of our previous episodes, but one thing I wanted to start doing at the end of every interview or getting into the last end of the interview is name five things you would bring inside the bunker. Okay. So for you, Rick, I have a question for you. What are your right. top five current comic series? you would bring with you inside the bunker? Um, the five current books re, uh, right now are um, Nice House on the Lake. It is, it's this incredible horror series. Every issue has that gut punch moment where you're like, oh my God, I can't believe this. What's going to happen next? Just absolutely brilliant. Um, so yeah, Nice House on the Lake, James Tinian. He is the hottest writer in the industry right now. Just everything he's doing is really fun, really exciting, um, really, really uh, wild. So yeah, so Nice House on the Lake is an obvious uh, first um first series that I'm just absolutely loving. Um, the uh, the second one would be a not so kid friendly title. Not that Nice House on the Lake, a horror book really is either, but uh, there's a book called Money Shot. Uh, it is very inappropriate, but it's hysterically funny. Um, Sarah Beatty, one of the funniest people I follow on Twitter, her and Tim Seeley um, have done an incredible book about space explorers that are getting funded by uh, meeting with some aliens. We'll leave it at that. Um, and it goes from there. It's a book called Money Shot, so you can kind of figure out the rest. It's pretty twisted, but it's a uniquely clever book uh, that we've really enjoyed from Vault. Um, and it's just been a whole lot of a uh, whole lot of fun and just an absolutely crazy, uh, crazy ride. So um, Teen Titans Academy, I'm enjoying a lot. Teen Titans has always been my favorite group of characters, Titans and Legion. There's no current Legion title, but um, Teen Titans Academy is a lot of fun. It's really a different um, book and they've, they've had some great mysteries in there and some great uh, characters and some brand new uh, faces of the DC universe. So that's been a pretty refreshing book. One of the best things DC's putting out. Um, uh, on the other side over on Marvel, um, Strange Academy, that's been an incredible book as well. It's kind of like Hogwarts in the Marvel Universe, where you get to see Doctor Strange and Scarlet Witch and Brother Voodoo. And basically all the major magic users of the Marvel Universe are teaching like the next generation of kids, which also includes like Emily Bright and a bunch of other brand new um, characters that are like the son of Dormammu, you know, like Dr. Strange's enemy is like training to become a good guy, you know, and so there, there's some clever moments in there. Um, Scotty Young and Herberto Ramos and the, the whole team there have just done an awesome job with every issue. Um, and then uh, number five, I'm trying to think of what image. I wish Saga would come back someday soon. We're supposed to get some word on that uh, soon. 
Um, but uh, um, trying to think of one more book that would be really just to stand out. I feel like there's something I just read that I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. <laughs> I'll put you on the spot there a little bit, but yeah. Uh, but it, yeah, if I, if it, um, so, uh, something is killing the children also James Tinian, which is through boom, boom has been such an incredible partner to us. So I guess I'll go with that. Uh, that's a phenomenal series. It's kind of like Buffy meets Pennywise, uh, just some intense, intense horror stuff. And that's been a humongous hit. Um, that's kind of one of the hottest books of the last few years where it, it didn't really catch on the first three or four issues. It really didn't catch on to like issue nine or 10. And now like, it's such a incredible series that, um, you know, uh, that writer is just the hottest, you know, the hottest writer going, just absolutely killing it, doing some incredible stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, so the, I guess that's my, I guess that's my five uh, there through a good variety of publishers. Um, I think that's five different publishers yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Um, awesome. So yeah, so uh, those, those would be my five, I guess, so. Yeah, and if and if anybody's in the Melbourne, West Melbourne area, um, please, you know, see Rick and the team at Famous Faces and Funnies. Thank you so much for joining today. Um, I just, like I said, I've been, you're, I'm proud to have you as a friend. You know, I, pre I appreciate you the 24 <laughs> plus years you've been, you know, there with me, uh, selling me comics. Why the Last Man, the whole reason I even started reading that and collect, I have all issues of it as well. Um, it's because of you, <laughs> you, you, you right. pushed awesome. me into that. And um, I'm excited as well for the new series starting. Is it two days you said? I didn't. Uh, it's, out, it's on, I think it's Monday night. I think it's the 13th, if I'm not mistaken, either. Okay, so I think couple, that's Monday. Yeah, uh, so yeah, days. we're super excited about that. Um, yeah, just a weekly show on FX and on Hulu. Um, so yeah, so I think that's going to be the biggest buzz show. If I can give anyone any, re any recommendations for TV, by the last man, I'm, I'm so excited. If it's half as good as the comic, it's going to be the most buzzed about uh, TV show in a long time. So yeah, I'll, I'll actually cool. send a, I'll have a link in this uh, description and on Spotify awesome. on how to watch the trailer for that. I'll also link your store as well. I know you have a trailer on your Facebook page or not right. on YouTube, actually, I believe it is. Um, and yeah. I'll, I'll link that as well. So, uh, but is there anything you want to mention anything coming up for famous faces in general? Um, I mean, we've, we've just been keeping it pretty calm as far like we haven't been able to get back to doing trivia, broken barrel or back to cinema world for movie premieres or whatever. Our, our day to day is just keeping us so busy. Virtual roundtable, at least for now, we'll eventually get back in store. But that's where we just discover. Of course, next week, we'll discuss why the last man, what everyone thought it thinks of Marvel's what if what you guys thought about, uh, you know, Loki and all the other different series and TV shows, Shang-Chi. I mean, we just really are in a golden age of entertainment. And we're just so thankful to have a community that you know, supports our store and just where we keep, you know, growing and growing and growing. Um, I'm lucky to have the world's best staff. I swear, man, like as far as I would put the staff of this store and the knowledge of the people that work for, for uh, me under, you know, again, saying the comic store, like I, Paul is just the most passionate person about comics I've ever met, even more so than, than I've been doing this for decades, but he just loves comics. He can tell you everything about the history of comics. And it's just the knowledge of, of our staff really goes above and beyond. And I think the fact that we keep up with our social media and, you know, some people are like, Oh, I sent a message at midnight. Oh, I'm, I know I'm going to an answer until tomorrow. I'm like, no, you can answer at 1203. You're like, as soon as, you know, people write, Oh, do you have this pop and stuck? Oh yeah. I have it aside for you. They're like, okay. I didn't expect anyone to be there. Like we just, we work a lot, but we love what we're doing. And I think it shows in um, our store success. And we're just so thankful to our local and our, you know, um, Facebook live community that's really just helped our store grow. And yeah, we thank you, uh, you know, so much for having us. It's definitely a, a you know, fun. Um, so yeah, we, we just are lucky to keep doing what we love, what we're passionate about. And I think it shows that, you know, anytime you visit our store. So. All right. Well, thank you, Rick, for joining me inside the bunker. I appreciate it so much. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Absolutely. And there you have it. That is my interview with Rick Shea from Famous Faces and Funnies. Please follow Famous Faces and Funnies on Twitter, Facebook at FFF Comics. That is their Twitter handle as well as their Facebook to watch the live auction. They do a great, great job with them. So please help support local small businesses. And you have a great staff. I mean, they're at Famous Faces and Funnies. If you have any questions, you know, please reach out to them through Facebook Messenger or anything like that. They can help get all of your needs for any kind of fandom that you can think of. I thank you to Rick for coming onto the show and joining me inside the bunker. And also, uh, thank everybody again for supporting me and my show. I've gotten a lot of great feedback from you guys. I really appreciate it. Again, you can reach me on Twitter at Inside the Bunker and my email at Inside the Bunker Podcast at gmail.com as always. Please like and subscribe if you're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube. Please 
you know, do that for me. Really helps me out. Really makes me feel good that I'm doing something, you know, like, again, it's my passion project, so I'm really enjoying doing this. So please, please help support me in that venture. But uh, without further ado, I look forward to talking to all of you uh, very, very soon with another episode of Inside the Bunker. Thank you all and take care.